Hey, hi, uh, I'm Kumar. I'm an Oracle DBA expert as well as the blogger in Oracle. So uh, this is a video blog session on the blog, uh, you know, which actually explains you how does an Oracle database performs an instance recovery after the failure. So I hope if you're a DBA, uh, you must be already knowing this, uh, that as soon as an instance sees a failure, once you are bringing up your system next time, that is your database instance, automatically database performs an instance recovery, right? And then uh, we are going to discuss the same in this video blog. We are going to understand what is the process of, you know, uh, bringing up the database, uh, you know, what happens when the database starts up after the database instance has been failed with the help of a small uh, diagram uh, that is the, the, nothing but the flowchart. And after the flowchart is done, we are also going to see in reality, you know, how does it acts on the recovery process. So after understanding, you know, uh, the flowchart, we are quickly going to perform the same thing uh, in the real time on the Oracle database. We are going to fail the Oracle database instance. And then once we bring up the database, we are going to quickly see uh, in, you know, uh, uh, in real time, what is that Oracle is performing in the background. So let us quickly start with the flowchart that I have got for you guys to understand. So let me open that. So this is the flowchart that I have got for you guys uh, to explain how does an instance recovery uh, will takes place in the Oracle database. So consider at nine o'clock in the morning, your database is normal and it is behaving as expected. So at 9, 10 a.m., just consider that there are 30 transactions happened in the database of which already 20 are committed transactions and 10 are uncommitted transactions. So the meaning of telling you guys an uncommitted transaction means these transactions are not yet decided by the user process whether to give a commit or rollback. So it might be a commit, but it might be a rollback. But at 9, 10 a.m., these 10 transactions are still active. They are not completed. And now consider at 9, 11 a.m. even without, I mean, uh, even before these 10 uncommitted transactions are completed, consider that your instance is terminated. Now, once your instance is terminated, after a while, probably you must have recognized in four minutes and you have initiated a startup normal. And this startup normal, as soon as you initiated 9.15 a.m., consider at the same moment your instance has been mounted. To mount up the instance, it will not take too much of time, okay? So as soon as your database has been mounted, now as the database is, you know, initiated a database open, after the mount, the next stage will be open, right? So whenever database starts opening the database, the first thing that it does is, because the last database shutdown was not clean, it was terminated, so what it does is it identifies if there are any redo transactions that it has to roll forward. So we call that action as roll forward. So what happens in the roll forward phase is all the transactions will be recognized in, I mean, with the help of the redo log files and whatever transactions were happened at 9, 10 a.m. So as on 9, 10 a.m. there were 30 transactions that has ran. So all these 30 transactions will rerun again okay as before the database is open and after these 30 transactions are reran okay then it will also try to identify if it is able to access the undo and if it is in sync or not and it will take get the undo segments online and once it identifies the undo segments are fine then the database will be open and do not consider that your you know recovery phase is done because out of 30 transactions only 20 transactions were committed so that means out of these 30 transactions, the 10 transactions has to be, you know, roll back. So when does it do? After the database is open, now the database will go and access the undo segments with the help of the information that is available in the undo segments. It will now perform the rollback of those 10 uncommitted transactions. Now what happens at the end of the database open stage is, only the data which is as on 9, 10 a.m. with 20 committed transactions will be available in the system. So this is how the database will perform a instance recovery. But remember guys, at the background, you know, uh, these data blocks which are again available in the database buffer cache by, by actually rerunning all these, you know, 30 transactions, these blocks need not be written into the disk, right? Because you guys already know that DB writer is a background process which will keep writing the dirty buffers from the buffer cache into the disk asynchronously. So as soon as the transaction is committed or rolled back, it does it did not mean it doesn't mean at all 
that the data is written into the disk then and then I mean as soon as a commit is issued that is one point that you guys have to remember after understanding this flow now let us quickly go to an instance and see whether this behavior is in real is it the same process happening in the background or not let us monitor that now so let me open my putty session now so as you can see on my screen so I have an active session here this is an open you know alert log file and this is my database instance so this is the 12c1202 database and now what I will do is I'll just come out of this you know SQL plus command line console I'll just quickly terminate my session my database is normal I did not I did not run any 30 transactions as of now as you guys know each and every second there will be active transactions running in the background you can consider these transactions as part of your you know system sysox table spaces which runs in the background right there are certain uh, maintenance activities which will keep running in the background so you can consider those transactions as an example as I have shown in the figure so now let us kill this smon which is equivalent to terminating a session okay so now you can quickly monitor here that as soon as we kill this your instance is terminated here there is a trace file generated and uh, because your pmon was active pmon has terminated the session because of unavailability of smon background process now this is fine coming back to this image we are at this stage so the instance has been terminated now let us start up the database okay so now let me show you and as soon as I start up the database right I will show you something which is exciting as well so uh, okay so I'll have to copy my SQL because this is the SQL that I have got that will help us to identify after the database is open whether your SMON is doing certain recovery or not are your undo segments are being accessed or not so in this stage whether it is actually performing a recovery or not using an undo segment is what we will have to identify as soon as the database opens right that is nothing but the rollback action so I'll show you that literally now and along with this recovery option I'll also show you whether the redo is being accessed or not with the help of uh, the alert log information so let me do that so as the system starts up I will have this copied and as soon as the database opens I will just run a command I will run a select statement like this which will give you the information about see this a segment which is running which is of size this which is active and this is nothing but your recovery process accessing your undo segments because I have ran this SQL statement after the database has been opened right coming back to this image right let, let us understand this image with the help of what trials we have done so we have terminated the session we have started it up at the mount stage between after the mount stage and between the open stage we need a evidence that there is a roll forward action is happening right let us check that evidence from the alert log file so I'll show you that in the alert log file so as you can see here I'll you know I'll show you you would be excited a bit after the mount stage has been completed the database open has been initiated after the database has been initiated open has been initiated you can see that there is a begin crash recovery has been started so that means instance has, has identified that the last shutdown of the instance was a crash so it has to perform a recovery now to perform the recovery it started a redo scan and after completing the redo scan it has identified that 26 kilobytes of redo has been read out of which 32 data blocks needed recovery so that means there are data blocks which needs recovery and all these 32 blocks recovery has been started and it has used this you know redo log file for recovery information and with the help of that it has completed the redo application that means all the roll forward job has been done with the help of accessing a redo log file and after identifying how many data blocks need recovery the roll forward action has been done at this point you can also see the SCN number has been recovered after the transaction has been after the database instance has been crashed so that is what you can see with the help of this particular message in the alert log file after the instance is crashed the same is written in this you know workflow as well after the database has been mounted before it is opened all 
the redo information has been reapplied. That is what we call it as roll forward operation. And it will also access the undo segments, whether they are uh, online or not. So we will find that information here. Uh, let me show you that before it is opened. So you can see that undo initialization has been finished. Okay. And this is before the database is open. Okay. So I'll show you that. See here. This is where the database open has been completed. But on the top, you can see that undo initialization has been finished. That means it will try to identify because it has done some recovery operation, redo has been, you know, performed. It will make sure that after, I mean, before the database is opened, undo is available so that this undo will be used after the database has been opened for rollback operation, right? I think until then it is clear. Now coming back to the other console where we have ran an SQL statement to identify whether recovery is started or not, you can see that clearly I'm just, you know, going and querying these dynamic performance views, which are, uh, you can see here that, uh, let me show you. One is DB underscore segments, where the segments are of type undo. That is what I'm trying to find out. And also role name. So what is the rollback segments name that is being accessed? And because it is rollback, there will be certain locks also. That is the reason why in the image you will find locks while performing a rollback operation. All right. So now you can clearly see that the undo transactions have been accessed or has been performed by system user as soon as the startup operation has been completed. Now with this, the same thing, you know, you can, you can rerun the same query again. There will nothing, there will be no recovery operations running, right? This will clearly tell you that the recovery operations after the database has been opened has been performed by the database by accessing undo segments. All right. So I think this is very clear to, you know, understand what is a roll forward operation and what is a roll backward operation with the help of the image that I have got for you guys on the screen, as well as with the help of the exercise that we have performed by crashing up the database, starting it up, monitoring the alert log file. And after monitoring the alert log file, we have also monitored the undo segments, which performs an immediate rollback operation. So I think with this, you are pretty much clear of how this is being performed. So if you if you like this video blog, please subscribe to our channel. You will be looking out for much more exciting topics on Oracle database administrations. Uh, I hope you have loved this, you know, uh, video. You can place your comments on the blog. I'll be very much happy to answer them. Thank you. Bye-bye.